have you been squeezed in that tight spot where the person sitting next to you has a very unpleasant smell emanating from the body but you can't see you just hold your breath and pray that that person leaves or you leave first that is what we're going to be talking about today, body odor and how to deal with it and what people who have it can do about it to help all of us smell fresh air around us. Joining me in studio is Dr. Dennis Bote. He's the medical director for Health Net Medical Center. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. Bote. How are you? I'm very well. Great. So let's start off. When we talk about body odor, to someone, everyone should have a particular smell. So why are we making so much noise about body odor? Uh, yes, indeed, everyone has a particular smell. I mean, that's the reason why dogs can sniff. Right. And they know this is my owner, this is a stranger, mm. and therefore it will bark. So we all have unique odors. But it, it only becomes a problem when it's offensive, okay. um, that the next person to you doesn't feel comfortable, mm. or people generally don't feel comfortable around you, then right. there's a problem. And so it's unique. But is it perceived by the person who has it? all the time interestingly or? the person who has it sometimes they don't even they are not aware hmm. that because they are so used to it i mean right. he also thinks that this is my body odor i mean this is me you know but that that they usually don't know hmm. but they have to be told some way somehow very well so walk us through how i mean someone as an individual acquires even the body odor the peculiar ones we all have is it something that when it changes it's a disease or we're all born with one particular one, and that's the same one we carry through life until we die. <laughs> As if you are born and people deviate. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, when, we, when we're growing up, I mean, when we get to puberty, things change in the body a bit. People okay. begin to grow hair in certain places. I mean, the pubic regions, the armpits, the groin, and certain areas. Um, we have glands in our body that mm. produces sweat. We have two different types. We've got the eccrine glands and then the apocrine glands. The apocrine glands usually come in after puberty. So you realize that kids, most kids do not have any body, offensive body odor. Right. But after a certain age, when hair begins to grow in certain mm. places, then these apocrine glands are, um, become more rife, they become more alive, and they produce a lot of sweat. Um, the content of the sweat mm. is what uh, leads to the body odor. Okay. And not just the content of the sweat, but also the fact that as a human being, we all have bacteria on our bodies. Oh. Every part of your body has some bacteria sitting there. We call them normal flora. Okay. They are there not necessarily to harm cause you. disease or cause, cause harm you. But so in the armpit or uh, under the breast, the groin, um, certain areas behind the ear oh. where the apocrine glands are, when the sweat is produced, mm and I mean mixed with other external factors like dirt and all these things. Right. Now the bacteria in, on your skin mm -hmm. get the opportunity to in quote, digest the acid or break down the acid, to, I'm sorry, break down the sweat right. into it's certain exactly. acids and proteins. Right. And it's the mix of these acids and proteins mm -hmm. that give the peculiar smell to the person. For example, you know that um, um, vinegar, for example, is a form of acetic, acetic right. acid. So you can smell vinegar and know that this is this is it any and, and and so it's the same thing where bacteria on the person's body break down the sweat into pro certain proteins and certain acids and that is what gives the odor so if somebody is producing excessive sweat mm -hmm. if somebody has too much or allows bacteria to fester too much mm -hmm. on their body then you're giving a greater chance to uh, for this bacteria to do their work and therefore we give you that odor so explain to us how some people will allow the bacteria to first start, will allow the sweat to be produced in excess. What conditions will lead to this? Some people naturally produce more sweat than others. Okay. Um, some people too may have certain medical conditions that uh, will predispose them to having certain odors. Mm -hmm. Some people may be on certain medications that um, may engender a uh, smell. Mm -hmm. You know that sometimes when you are on certain medications, you urinate and you can smell right. the medication yeah. in your urine. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that um, sweating is also a form of excretion, excretion. of, okay. of, 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 of uh, fluid from your body. So that can also be, be it. But sample can be on certain diets. Mm. Eating certain types of food consistently right. can affect uh, your body odor. Mm. But essentially, it is about how well you keep these places. Mm. So if you, if you have a well-shaved armpit or well-shaved groin, mm. 
you reduce the um, the chance for the bacteria to to grow in in, in, in colonies or in numbers. Yeah. So the less bacteria you have, the less breakdown you have. Okay. So if you don't wash well, if you don't wash frequently, you don't shave, you always have a bush there. Mm. Then the more bacteria you have, and the more active their breakdown is going to be. Right. If you also have that um, situation where you you, for example, your feet will be sweating mm. anyway, and your feet is always covered in in socks and shoes all the time. You don't allow free air to pass, right. and even in your groin, I mean, you don't. We, people wear all kinds of tight things, and no air is passing. Then you create that kind of very conducive environment for the bacteria to be able to feed mm. on the um, on the sweat that comes. So um, one other way is to say that well, you either deal with the population or in the, the colonies of bacteria mm. you have, or you can also deal with the amount of sweat that you are producing at a time. So then you look at it. Okay, so how can you reduce the sweating? How mm. can you reduce the the colony of bacteria mm. when you juxtapose this? two things i'm sure you can be able to deal to with it deal with it very well so does it run in families is it that if i have a mother who has some body odor naturally i would have the propensity to have body odor it is possible but mm. i think it all comes down to training right. um i remember when we were growing up my mother was so concerned about about that so she trained me like mm -hmm. even now I, at this age, sometimes when i'm conscious <laughs> i sometimes would do this thing yeah. and I smell myself mm -hmm. because my mom was just all over us and she'll go and get something called alum or something yeah. and then you put in that it's just a whitish powder mm -hmm. you know and then throughout the day you don't sweat because right. if you come home sweating she will they will give you nicknames <laughs> at home so everybody's conscious about that right. so our mothers have ways and um the good old lemon is there mm -hmm. we'll come to talk about some of these um, the contents of these things right. for which reason application of it. such would help in in that but if you don't get the right training mm. and it goes through puberty and um, it sticks with you, mm. it's likely to stick with you for a long mm. time until you make that conscious effort mm. to reduce it. So um, your body gets exposed to you, you work in a particular place, or so you have a particular chore mm. of life. It means that you'll be exposed to certain bacteria at mm. the same time. Mind you, we talked about normal flora, mm -hmm. but you can also have external flora coming onto your, onto your skin, and they're also there to feed on this, and then depending on the kind of bacteria you have, and coming kind of thing, in your produces. produce a certain acid will be released right. so a person will have a peculi peculiar smell mm. for himself and the person must make that conscious effort to, to get rid of either it. deal with the bacteria <laughs> or deal with the sweat but anyway so let's talk about some of the ways we can handle you mentioned alum you mentioned lime but you're going to talk about the properties and these things that help clear at least the body odor or reduce it that's right so um uh, one, you make sure that you are washing yourself. If you know that you have body odor, you've been alerted that you have body odor. At least minimum. If you know, but we started off by saying most of them don't even know. I, I, that's what I said. Somebody, you Somebody have been will alert you. alerted. Mm. I mean, you do well to do it to at least bathe twice a day, minimum. Okay. minimum. If you can do it three times a day, Great. good. Now, if you are that type who wears things that um, make you sweat a bit more, mm -hmm. wear things that are a bit loose so you can have air passing so that you dry up much quicker so that bacteria would not have the, uh, have access to, to sweat. Okay. Um, you are wearing shoes and socks all the time and you are that sweaty. I mean, it's going to Apart from the sweat and all the mm. scent it can bring, uh, when you remove your socks, a dog come and dogs come and pick a crammer fan call. <laughs> it means that there's something that even a dog doesn't want it around. You come and take it and go and put it somewhere else. So you should know that. Then, uh, as much as possible, wear loose shoes mm. or sandals so that air can okay. pass and then it dries you up more more quickly. Again, the other things to do um, is to look at the use of the natural things. You've mentioned lemon. Mm -hmm. Lemon contains at least um, something called aluminum chloride. Mm -hmm. So what, and this same aluminum chloride is also employed in this alum I was talking about. Right. That you have a chalky and then mm -hmm. you just put powder or even in the form of a liquid. Let me tell you what my mom did. She would put the same alum in water okay. and we put it in shore bottles. And so ah, it becomes like a roll-on. Right. So that becomes it's more of an antiperspirant, right. not necessarily a dodo. It doesn't it doesn't have any nice smell. Okay. So you just put the alum in your armpit. Okay, but what it tastes is that with the aluminum chloride in it, it what it does that it blocks the sweat pores. Okay. So it reduces the extent of sweating right. that you can have. Right. So with the aluminum chloride in the in the lemon, with the aluminum chloride in the alum, you end up blocking sweat pores to reduce the extent. Of, of sweat once you have done that but you won't have much to feed on right. in order to bring out that kind of stench mm -hmm. again um what we have on the market is also deodorants and antiperspirants mm -hmm. 
The deodorants will give you that nice smell, wow. have a nice smell too. It may not necessarily contain aluminum chloride, mm -hmm. but there are other um, agents that contain aluminum chloride, okay. which we call the antiperspirants. Right. So you put them in your armpit and these places concerned, and it will reduce the extent of, of sweating. Yeah. So basically, the equation is that <laughs> sweat bacteria. So once you deal with either of these things, right. by washing yourself with a carbolic soup, antibacterial soup, mm -hmm. you end up reducing the colonies of bacteria so that you have less bacteria and sweat. Right. Or you reduce the amount of sweating, bacteria won't have anything to feed mm -hmm. on. You are likely to be able to control body odor. Very well, but it also seems as if people with body odor who have not alerted that they have it tend to counteract the smell by using strong perfumes. <laughs> <laughs> that thing sometimes backfires. <laughs> it almost <laughs> always backfires. <laughs> it backfires. <laughs> it backfires. You see that you were smelling the strong thing. Like it's like that taking a drink and you say that the drink has a bitter aftertaste. Right. It, it seems sweet but bitter. Yeah. So you can smell something good on the person, but behind it you can smell that there was a bad body odor. And the mixture of that is even sometimes worse. Right. So don't just go for. I want to smell, put something nicely smelling on myself, right. but go to the fundamentals. Right. Try to control the bacteria. If the fundamentals are weak, you'll be exposed. <laughs> <It's> exposed. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> but also, let's also talk about people who bleach. There's a peculiar smell. And yeah. what's the science or the mechanism behind that? And what can our women who are fighting so hard to look fair do to make sure that they stop this? Yeah, it is very interesting. That's a, an interesting twist. And it's very common that you see people who bleach and they have this peculiar odor, you wouldn't want to stay by them. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they have actually, they are destroying the, the, the surface of their skin. And by that, uh, possibly they are exposing more sweat pores mm -hmm. to, be, to release um, sweat. Mind you that you want to put things on to block sweat pores. Right. So by bleaching and clearing everything in the path of your skin, you actually expose yourself to more um, of this. And then remember that now bacteria would always want to feed on dead stuff. Right. The, I mean, for, for even for the feet, mm -hmm. for example, you know, your feet, under your feet, you see it um, peeling off right. sometimes. And it's dead skin. Okay. So it sweats and bacteria have more to feed mm. on. So in the same way, you are taking off the natural skin, okay. it's, it, it, it's it dies. Dying. And then you have bacteria working on it, mm. and therefore you're going to smell. I mean, it's, it's so awful. I, I know when beautiful women, when, get, when they get close, you want to run away. I mean, very fair, because mm -hmm. they've taken all their medication, yeah. and they, but you That's just can't so stand by them. Anyway, your take-home message concerning body odor and what we should do, and also if they come to the hospital, can you help them? Yes, I mean, definitely. <laughs> you go through counseling. Okay. And then the, if any decision medication or anything to help you would be given to you. I mean, basically, I would say that body odor is something that can be controlled. I mean, no matter how far it has gone, how bad it's gone, it can still be dealt with. I mean, basically, let's look at the things we're talking about. Sweating excessively, do anything possible to reduce it. Um, your skin has bacteria um, that would always be feeding on sweat. So wash down more frequently if you have that kind of problem. And by solving this equation, it most likely you're going to um, help yourself reduce body odor. Um, try to wear things that are light enough to mm. allow air to pass. Right. When air passes over anywhere, I mean, the amount of vapor um, liquid there would also reduce. Mm. Try to shave. Try mm. to shave down. Don't shave it, Kakra. <laughs> Just in the armpit. Let it, <laughs> let the With your palms. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Dr. Dennis Vote. He is the medical director for HealthNet Medical Facility. And we have been talking about body order and as he gave you the final tips make sure if someone close to you doesn't know just say it nicely and politely don't be rude about it and maybe give them a parcel of lemon that they can use you would have helped them or buy an antiperspirant for them it certainly will be acknowledged